Alright, so we're back with the Final Fantasy 13 2 Let's Play, and yeah, like I said, we're gonna go fight the Oogaloo, but, you know, as long, I guess as long as we're here, we might as well at least open the gate. We don't have to go there, but we can at least open it. That way we don't have to, like, make treks across time in the in the Historia crew, even though it doesn't really matter if we do anyway. I like this Chocobo song the best. It's just kind of cool. Might as well use the wild artifact to open the gate. Alright, so we have the sunless waterscape open for when we go back that way. But for now, we go to the Yashchops Massif. so as you can see there's a waypoint right there the ancient Cirrus was protected by a warrior blessed by the God. and there's a new sphere here travelers of the timeline can you hear me Servant of the goddess, witness to the timeline. I have committed an unforgivable crime, and now I must pay the price for my sins. Many years ago, evil in the form of a merciless beast materialized in the city of Padra. It was no ordinary creature, but one that devoured time instead of prey. In order to free our city of the menace, I had no choice but to banish it into the void beyond. There was peace once again in Padra. However, this created a distortion in time that continued to grow. As it spread, it began to swallow innocent victims, one by one. When they were taken, all that remained were crimson orbs. Orbs that contain their grief and anguish. Each one a silent reproach, reminding me of the terrible mistake that I had made. But look what is happening. The creature cannot be imprisoned for eternity. It is trying to break free to once again feed on time. I cannot banish it now. Not like I did all those centuries ago. Travelers of time, listen to me. The terrible beast must be defeated. You. Okay, I need to sort this out. So one of the Yules from long ago caused a distortion in time to banish the monster and save the city. But then that caused another distortion. Right. And that created a paradox, which is what we're facing now. Who knew what the future was going to bring when she made her choice? 
choice. She knew she was going to cause pain and suffering for a lot of people. She also knew that was her only choice. Her anguish remains in these ruins in the form of a ruby of grief. That's awful. Noel, we have to stop her suffering. Let's show her that she did the right thing. If we defeat the monster, we should be able to set her free. Alright, so now we go face the Oogaloo. Or just over that way. Why not? I'll fight these guys. We're gonna need to switch our Christerium stuff to something else, however. I don't remember if I have all these monsters tamed. I know I have this Paranthus tamed because I just checked that out. Oh, I somehow have the Mandrake tamed too. Hmm, that's cool. We should change Mog's outfit again. To White Mage Mog, let's go. Alright, so the Oogaloo will show up here in this area. Alright, so let's change the party paradigm really quickly. So we have the premeditation already. It wants very specific ones for this. Uh, protect. Protection, we'll switch you to a synergist, and we'll switch you to Pulse Soldier. Delta attack, and solidarity. Medic, commando. Alright, so it says to start out this. So, we're going to be using these four right here. I'm going to keep in Relentless and Assault and Cerberus though, just in case I get a chance to use them. Here we go. Same friggin' attack, like. And it's immune to this spell. Uh, I'm gonna need. I. Okay. I just need to start getting damage off on it. I really need to try and get this thing down on deep protect though. I can't get it to stick though.
Oh, now I got the stick. I think it's immune to poison, isn't it? Yeah, it's immune to poison. Of course it is. That makes sense, though. Because it spits up poison, so why would it be immune? Why would it be poisonable? Yeah, we got imperil the stick. See if we can uh, get this stuff to stick again. protect the stick but I don't think it's really gonna okay it had to be done I had to have some way to get rid of its buffs you know what here might be more worth it to just oh, okay Provoke off. No, it's not looking great because my Sentinel can't get the Provoke off. Of course, of course, of course, of course. You know what, there's Finally, he gets the provoke off after I had to waste a phoenix down. Jeez. I'm just gonna go ahead and try and attack him to death if I can. I mean, he is pretty low. There, Oogaloo defeated. Five star. That was ridiculous. 2000 CP though. Freaking ridiculous. I hope we did it. I hope we were able to end her suffering. I'm sure we did. 
In an effort to save the people of the city, Yul broke her oath and tampered with time. This caused a disturbance in the timeline, which led to the creation of a paradox. And the death of many innocent people. I have to wonder, did Yul make the right choice? Was there even a right choice to make? If she had done nothing, people would have died. The city that Yul so desperately hoped to save was eventually destroyed. No matter what her decision, either choice would have eventually led to the death of the people of Padra. I don't have the ability to see into the future like she does, and I'm thankful for that. If we knew the outcome of all our actions, wouldn't we just give up? What would be the point of trying? But I can't see what's going to happen. I don't have the power to know what tomorrow may bring. And that's why we can still hope and believe in the future. Alright, that's all we can do for this. There's still one more fragment, I lied. Because I forgot that actually there's... You can't finish Yastrop from a thief until you can actually finish Brush of Ruins. Which is why they kind of go together. But now that we have uh, the uh, Sunlit the Waterscape uh, open. In 400 AF, the Sunlit Waterscape has been designated a special observation zone by the Academy. But now, strange and disturbing reports are coming from the area. The Flan that live in the forest appear to be organizing themselves, with groups of young Flan apparently taking lessons delivered by their older counterparts. Alright, so Flan School. This is fun. This is lots and lots of fun. of Sunlith is a quiet place. I thought I heard a voice. I cocked my ear towards the wind, and through the rustling of the green leaves, I thought I heard snow. As much as I'd hoped we'd run into my hero, it wasn't him that we encountered in the forest. I think there's someone else here with us. Your voice is nearby, Kubo. Well, well, first things first. Customize this. That one's fine. Combat clinic. Solidarity is probably fine. And yeah. But this should be the lead part. Oh, look at all the colorful flan. Like they're having fun. Yes, but they have troubles too, Kubo. A bunch of their friends got lost somewhere in the forest and haven't been seen since, Kubo. That's so sad. No, we should help them find their way back. I know you mean well, but aren't you forgetting something? They're monsters, and I'm a monster hunter. Can you be a monster finder instead? Just this once? <laughs> Just this once. Alright, come on. Mm hmm. There's a little bit of humor there. Come on, So there's one. Each of these guys are worth 800. I think they're each worth 800 CP. And you find them, so it should be rather nice. 
the shot. But Sean are synergist tameable, which I got one. And Usaga Usaga Nashi are tameable saboteurs. Yay, they drop a lot of mana slivers, it seems like. The Sunless Waterscape is kind of all the same as far as music goes. The easy way to find out where the Flan may or may not be is just go, go around and see if you see Flan like these guys. And if you do, then guess what? There should be a little Flan nearby that you can't find. Oh no. <coughs> there we go. These are what? Flandits? I'm surprised they show up. These guys are easy. On that. <laughs> really, my favorite. Flan in any Final Fantasy series are actually in, uh, in Final Fantasy 12. Now, a lot of people don't like Final Fantasy 12, but I like the Flan in that just because there were so many different types, and you know, it was really kind of fun. We got through the Ganashi as well, it looks like. But yeah, it was just kind of fun. Some of the Flan were, uh, if I remember correctly, mission specific Flan. Not to mention, there was just so many monsters in Final Fantasy 12 because. They were all the. They had different classes of monsters, and it was kind of cool. I liked it, but you know, I like Final Fantasy XIII too. There's some cool looks for monsters here, as well as traditional looks, as like the Behemoth is a uh, has its pretty traditional look. one we need to find is over here. We'll skip right in the back of the little guy. Tell us if we're missing any. Last one is this way, if I remember correctly. Actually, let's talk to Chocolina and see if she says anything. Meeting like this is fate. Nope, not really. She doesn't really say anything. That's disappointing. Until we.
There we go. And now we fight them for the mini flying fragment. So basically, we found all this plan. Now we have to go chase them away. Because they're being naughty plan. Bad plan. They must get pan punished. Punished severely. You're not a little plan, but I'll chase you away too. Three plan it's The thing that I like about Square Enix is that, like, they may make a specific song for a specific thing, but they end up using it, like, in almost every... They end up using it more than once. Which is nice. I'm glad they end up using it more than once. So, as you see, we get to fight the entire family of Mini Plant now. We already have a mini plan, so it's all good. Now we face blue mini plan. Like this song, Crazy Chocobo. Pretty nice. See, obviously, the sunless water escape 400 AS. It's just a big, easy thing. It's really not that difficult. There we go. But, like I was saying, Skornix makes sure to use their, uh... You get some essences from this, too. Hmm. Kids called her Meanie Miss Farron. I had completely forgotten about that until now. I'll bet she was one of those teachers that was nice when you were good, but could scare you when you weren't. As quick as lightning, she could turn from smiling angel to angry ogre. Yeah, no doubt about it. They're sisters, all right. 2,500 CP for the, uh, that many Farron plans. Fragment. Now we're all the way back here, which is where I don't want to be. We may go like a smidgen over, but not too much, because. Uh, oh yeah, Seeping Bree will show up on this side. They. I think it's like the only flying commando, right? Well, uh, I mean, other than, you know, flying board. They can be tricky for low level parties, which I don't think we are considered. Yeah, I don't think we are because it doesn't look like he's did all that much damage. 
Anyway, as I was saying... As I was saying, the reason I like Final, uh, the Final Fantasy series and Square Enix in general is because they'll, they'll use sounds in other like series slash other parts of the game other than the original... what it's intended for. back over this way because there's a graviton core that we can get but apparently we're gonna have to face the seeping brie first for whatever reason a lone seeping brie at that There it is. I see it bobbling up and down. There we go. And that'll do it for fragments in Sunlit Waterscape. Which makes Sunlit Waterscape complete, and we actually have enough CP, believe it or not, to go ahead and do a Chrysarium upgrade. But because we're over time, we'll do that the next episode. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Next episode, we shall go back to the main storyline and go ahead and finish off walking through Academia. And then, uh, hopefully, get someplace. So, see you guys on the next episode. Goodbye.